Hello guys, welcome back to more 49ers news, and this is very important 49ers news uh, for us anyway, but uh, I will show you. So as you can see, this is very, very important. This is the state of the 2021 49ers Super Bowl or bust in Kyle Shanahan's fifth season. So this is important. Uh, this is NFL.com uh, forward slash news. Uh, the writer was Adam Rank who did the article. So let's read it. So it says, When does your franchise start heading into 2021? Adam Rank sets the table by providing a state of the franchise look at all 32 teams. Uh, zero in and on the key figures to watch and set in the stakes for the season to come. So, members of the 49ers uh, Association, faithful fans around the world, and those who hope picking the 49ers to win just three games in the season. Last year is behind us. There is no use looking back at what happened in the past, but instead just looking towards the future. The proud 49ers franchise is once again loaded with one of the most uh, complete roasters in the NFL and should be regarded as one of the most front runners to reach the Super Bowl. I do believe that myself. But let's read this article. So, how the 49ers got here? Let's take a quick look at the highs and lows of the 2020 season. Right, the highs. Number one, starting the season 4-3 and three despite a number of injuries. The 49ers were beast by numerous uh, elements early on, but back-to-back -back wins over the heated Los Angeles Rams and Patriots moved San Francisco to 4-3. and three. This was the last time the 49ers were uh, point five hundred for the rest of the season. Point number two, knocking off the Cardinals in Week 16 to keep the birds out of the playoffs. Uh, as a Bears fan, I sort of appreciated that. And if you're a Niners fan, it's always fun to keep a divi uh, divisional rival out the playoffs. Also, I started Jeff Wilson, who rushed for 130, uh, 183 yards and caught a touchdown in that game in my fantasy championship. Unfortunately, I was going against uh, Alvin Kamar, who scored six touchdowns one day prior. Yes, I lost. Okay. The lows, pretty much the entire season. Uh, Nick Bowes tore his ACL in week two against the Jets. Uh, after that, nearly every uh, important 49ers player was injured at the time or other. I would list them all here, but it seems aggressively cruel. Let's just say it was a bad season and almost a miracle the 49ers won six games. Okay. 2021 VIPs. Uh, head coach Cole Shanahan. Uh, I think most people would agree that Shanahan is one of the most bright young minds in the NFL today, but it's weird to think about how his career recorded in just 29 and 35. In four seasons as coach of the 49ers, he's produced just one winning campaign in 2019, when the 49ers went 13 and 3 and hit the Super Bowl. To me, it's kind of like looking at Rody Rowans in AEW. He might not have the best win and lost record in company, but there is no doubt he's among the very best at his craft. And maybe the uh the uh, andrology was just for Kittle and me, but you can't tell me that Shanahan isn't an offensive strunt. Uh, all that being said, this feels like a pretty big year for Shanahan. I mean, he's not in danger of losing his job. Uh, and in injuries, really derailed the team last season. But at some point, you have to start consistently putting uh, Victoria's, uh, victories up on the board. And I feel like he can do that. He just needs to show us he can do that. His biggest test this season, uh, this upcoming season, will be navigating the quarterback situation. Speaking of which, quarterbacks. Okay. Jimmy G. You know uh, the 49ers weren't exactly thrilled with their quarterback last season. Two guys were recently took the uh, team to Super Bowls. Uh, the Rams addressed their displeasure more directly shipping uh, Gerard Jeff to Detroit in a trade for Matthew Stanford. The 49ers are not quite there yet, uh, especially willing to keep Jimmy G around after spending the number three overall pick on Trey Lance. I'm not sure if it's fair or not. i say Jimmy G was more present in his Super Bowl uh, appearance. I mean, if you've vented 49ers uh, defence and have been able to hold on to a lead, we'll be talking about Super Bowl champ Jimmy G. And Lance probably isn't even on the roster. But you know, Jimmy G almost missed uh, uh, Emmanuel Sanders late in the fourth quarter, which could have made the defence uh, collapse mute. Uh, if we look at this statistically, the 49ers are 22-8 and eight in games with Jimmy G as the starter. That's the fourth highest winning percentage among active quarterbacks since 2017, with at least 10 starts per NFL research. San Francisco 
seven and twenty seven without him in that same span. Jimmy G also ranks top five in passing yards per attempt, eight point three, and completion percentage sixty seven point five among all quarterbacks with at least twenty five starts since twenty seventeen. Okay. The biggest rub on a 29-year-old signal caller is that he's been injured, missed 10 games last year and 13 in 2018. And we've seen Nick Mullins, 16 starts, and CJ Befford, 12, and Brian Hoyer, 6, forced into action. Garoppolo has proven he's a winner. He needs to prove he can stay on the field, because the last time he started all 16, the team went to the Super Bowl. And then there's Lance, whom we'll get to shortly. Right, projected 2021 MVP, Nick Bosa defensive end. Okay. Bosa showed up for 49's workouts earlier this spring, but he couldn't do much because he was still rehabbing. Bosa was amazing during his rookie season with 16 tackles for loss, 9 sacks, and 25 quarterback pressures. A true game changer right off the bat. He played a crucial role in uh, San Francisco's Super Bowl run. Now the 49ers still did all right defensively last year without Bosa. This isn't uh, a one man defense. Not even close, but he his, uh, he was the guy who took the defense from good to every good. Like going to Disneyland is good. Having a fast pass to jump the lines is even better. The 49ers had just 126 quarterback pressures in 2020. They're fourth fewest in the league and allowed their league worst 3.3 seconds time to hurry per next-gen stats. Bosa's return to action will turn those uh, lackluster figures around really quick. The 2021 breakout star, Brandon Ayuk, wide receiver. Hopefully this could be good. Uh, the Arizona State uh, product was one of the many receivers coming out of the draft last year, and he didn't disappoint. Ayuk led the team in targets 96, receptions 60, receiving yards 748, and receiving touchdowns 5. He led all rookies in targets per game, 8.0. He had the second highest averages in receptions, 5.0, and receiving yards, 62.3 per game, behind only uh, Justin Jefferson. Now, some people, i.e. fantasy dorks, are afraid that Jimmy, uh, George Kittle and Debo Samuel being healthy will cut into the second year's pro target share. Okay, but I believe having Kittle and Samuel on the field will open things up for Ayuk. He's a dy uh, dynamic playmaker. If this 49ers offense is cooking and fully healthy, Brandon is going to eat. And then, and then the next year, a bunch of you will deny that I said this. And I'll have to take a screen grab and post it on IG. So let's just cut to the chase where you believe what I'm telling you. Okay. New face to know, Alex Mack, centre. The 49ers had injuries everywhere and the offensive line was no exception. The team did look up Trent Williams on a long-term deal. Uh, which was huge. Another move I really liked through was bringing in Matt to be the anchor of the defensive line. Matt played under Coach Shanahan in Cleveland and Atlanta. He'll be, uh, he'll be a big addition to 49ers offensive line. Seriously, this was one of the most underrated moves of the season. He's 35 years old, sure, but he had played in 90 consen uh, consistently games before missing the last two games of his past season. 2021 roadmap. Uh, the completive urgency index is higher not that Carl Shanahan is the hot seat or anything but this is obviously a crucial campaign for Jimmy G among others and the 49ers has considered a really good roster the, they are accepted to complete for the Lombardi so the urgency is higher three key dates week three versus Packers Sunday night I feel like every time I put down something with Green Bay, I have to ask myself who's going to be the Packers starting quarterback. But let's say it's Aaron Rodgers. Remember that the 49ers dismissed the uh, the Pack twice in 2019. And I'd say one of the key reasons Green Bay earned the number one seed last year was because 49ers had so many injuries. Week 8, the Bears, another uh, contestant where we can only uh, speculate who the quarterback's going to be at this point. For the season, Justin Fields and Trey Lance will always be tied together. And week 18 at Rams. The Rams come to Santa Clara in week 10. To me, these are two of the top three teams in the NFC along the World Championship Buccaneers. I expect the NFC West race to come down to the this final game. No disrespect to the Seahawks or Cardinals, but they are my top two in brutal, tough decisions. Uh, tough uh, division. Okay, would the 49ers be able to? So, would the 49ers be able to leave Trey Lance on the bench? 
I don't mean this in a negative way at all. Allow me to explain a bit. Lance is definitely uh, an exciting prospect. He had 28 touchdown passes and no interceptions in 2019. No picks. His team went 16-0 and and won the division uh, IFCS Championship. Even though he played only one game in 2020, he has uh, a lot of talent. But Lance also still lacks experience. And his game in raw in some areas see accuracy. Also, I described earlier, the 49ers have a great record with Jimmy G and the centre. The ideal situation is that Jimmy G starts all 17. Maybe you bench him in week 18 because you're wrapped up the number one seed and you cruise to the playoffs. In the meantime, you use the season on the practice field and next off-season to determine if Lance is your guy of the future. Look, uh, look what the Chiefs did with Patrick Mahomes. Because what you don't want to do is rush the 21-year-old rookie into action before he's ready. Not that Shanahan can't work his magic. But I think many Lance backers would love to see Jimmy do well while the 49ers win rookie materials. Next one. Survive without defence, according to Nader, Robert Sala. Allow me to speak for all of us with the route uh, for an NFC squad when I say, good riddance to Salah. Okay. Who is now the head coach of the New York Jets. Over the past two seasons, only one defence allowed fewer than 300 total yards per game. Salah's 49ers. Amazingly, the unit allowed fewer than 200 passing yards per game during that span. 188.6 to be exact. And I know that we were playing in a division with Gerard, Juff, Gerard Jeff, but that's still pretty impressive. The 49ers promoted linebackers, coach DeMarco Ryans, to this position uh, of defense coordinators. Yes, the former defense rookie of the year. He joined the team four years ago as a defensively uh, quality control coach. Now he's worked his way up. The 49ers also lost Kerry Hyder to Seattle. He led the 49ers with 8.5 sacks last season. Richard Sherman is also gone. Well, at least he's a still free agent. That means that some other guys are going to need to step up. D Ford missed the final 15 games of last season of uh, and missed 20 or 32 possible games with the 49ers. Jason Kinlaw, who who uh, faced the unthinkable task of replacing DeForest Buckner, posted 1.5 sacks and three tackles for loss as a rookie. A whole bunch of defensive players will need to step up and raise their games. Will well, not you, Fred Warner. You're already great. Okay. Get the most out of George Kittle. Stone Cold George Kittle is one of the most. It's one of my favourite players in the league. Even though he lives by that Stone Cold material of don't trust anybody, and hits me with that original, uh, uh, occasional stunner on Twitter. But if you think of the 49ers need George Kittle this year, give me a hell yeah. He had 48 receptions for 634 yards and two touchdowns in eight games last year. That's great uh, uh, production over the course of an entire season for for most of the tight ends. But we're taking where well, we're talking about uh, George Kittle here. He's averaged 80.6 yards per game since 2018. He had more than a thousand receiving yards and five touchdowns in both 2018 and 19. Uh, Bose is the defensive MVP while Kittle plays that role for the offense and there's the bottom line because well everyone agrees on that point our storyline people are overlooking how much George Kittle matters to the running game I know we are amazed by what George Kittle does in the passing game but he's huge for the running game and he really does take pride in blocking which not every pass catcher and tight end can say when Kittle was on the field in 2019 the 49ers faced lighter boxes more often than were more effective rushing team. The Niners averaged five point yards per carry with 20 rushing touchdowns when George was on the field. They averaged 3.5 uh, yards per carry and scored three touchdowns without him. These figures come uh, uh, these figures come from uh, next gen stats. People are overthinking who the RB1 is. The 49ers went from the second best uh, rushing team in 2019 to 15th last year dropping from over 144 rushing yards per game down to 118.1. I mean, they are still going to focus on this year, and I'll grant you uh, that the people concerned about who will be leading Russia and mostly uh, fantasy dorks like me, but last year Raheem Mozart missed eight games. Jeff Wilson led the team and carries 126 rushing yards, 600, uh, and rushing... Now, what was that? Jeff Wilson never team and carries 126, rush yards 600, and rushing touchdown 7. But the wild card might be third round pick Trey Simone, who was a monster for uh, Ohio State down the stretch last season. 
and that might make you think of uh, Carlos Hyde, who led the 49ers with 938 rush yards in Shanahan's first year as head coach. For 2021 to be a success, the 49ers must get to the Super Bowl. Uh, a year ago, I talked about the 49ers heading into the season with little uh, aspirations. The biggest thing that hurt them was injuries. I know it's tough to say that a 6-10 and 10 team should should have the Super Bowl in its sights, but that's how good the roster is. The 49ers need to at least get back to Super Bowl Sunday, or this season will seem like a waste. In closing, this is a very good 49ers team, one that should once again be seated among the top NFC contenders, but again, I put this down to last year. The 49ers had a great run under Jim uh, Harborough last decade, but never could cash in on their Super Bowl window. Got to finish the job, and this looks like a special group, even with the quarterback of the future waiting in the wings. San Francisco needs to take advantage of the present. And that was Adam Rank on this article. Well, that's a lot to take in. Um, so let's see what he's thinking. I understand what he's thinking. I understand. It's mainly injuries. If you watch, there's a guy called Grant Cohen. And I think he was talking to a doctor who loves the 49ers. I'll leave uh, a link on his uh, website uh, on these video that he did. Unbelievable. This doctor knew everything everything with injuries with the 49ers and what he was saying was that Shanahan is putting them on him consistently and it's hurting people off you've had two people gone one of them he's wavered off which was, was it skull wasn't it he's gone wavered off one ACL one uh, Achilles and they're all gone because what the doctor was saying is he's doing them six seven days a week hard work they need a break they need a break. You can't not consistently beat them up. They need a break. They need to chill out, work on whatever, you know, gym, whatever, work out, stay healthy, and then come back in. And this is what this guy was saying. He was saying a lot, but I'll leave the link in the description on Grant Cohen's fit, like, um, uh, video. It was amazing. Um, but yeah, it's always to do with the poxy injuries. That's all it is with us. It was terrible, absolutely terrible. What do I think of, um, you know, Jimmy G? I do not hate Jimmy G. I actually love Jimmy G. Um, since he's been with us, okay, first two seasons there. But then he peeled up. I mean, it was amazing. 2019 was near enough our year. Sadly, we couldn't finish the job, got her in. But Jimmy G put his heart into it. And every offense team, defense team, the whole team, man, it, it it was it was so unlucky that we couldn't follow with it to the end, but we got there with that team. Sadly, last year injuries just killed us. COVID killed us. I know it's not an excuse with COVID, but the injuries were just you know what I mean. I'm, I mean, imagine Debo, George, Nick, Jimmy out. Unbelievable! It was the worst I've ever seen. In an, I think it was like the top injury. I like the NFL. I think I think it was like the top of anything. I think of uh, injuries out of people of players out. Um. Yeah. Um. Good to talk about Jimmy G. He's in it. He's good. But like he said, staying healthy is absolute flipping key. We need a healthy side. And I mean Jimmy G. It's, um, you know, it's nervous. Like, this season, I'll be nervous. The pre-season, I've got to try and see. Um, trying to get time off work to see the pre-season. Because uh, if he's wearing... I don't know if you saw it. I don't know if it's like week one or week two when he had that injury. He had his brace on before he even come out. If you saw it, you saw it. That was scary in itself. You think, why has he got a brace on? How bad is this injury? And then we found out. The whole entire season. So... Do I think, you know, if if Jimmy G's out, Trey Lance has got to step up and step in. I know, you know, he's learning, he's still getting ready, and he's still kicking ass for us through training and gym. But the difference is, is a bit different where you're at, you know, the college football and the NFL. You know, for big experience, 100% intending, 100% uh, intending fans for the 49ers, mate, he will have a lot of pressure on that field, a lot. But can he deliver? If he's working hard, 
in the camps, OTAs, if he's just working hard, I mean, his mechanical arm, mechanical arm is doing effing phenomenal, mate, I do not see why we should have a problem, I really don't see why we should have a problem uh, this season, I do believe Adam ranks right, we are big favourite contenders, I think Shanahan's done well, and I think, you know, I don't want to boost it up and saying we're going to do this, we're going to do that. We always take a game step by step. Um, but I hope we do well. I really, really do. Um, leave your comments, guys. Tell me what you think about the article. Tell me what you think. Um, leave your comments because I love to see them. love to hear them. Um, plus, thank you very much for the 37 subscribers. We're really fortunate and humble. really appreciate it that you watch my vids and you're subscribed. And if you're new, subscribe. I'm doing a lot more 49ers videos and you love gaming. I'll be doing a lot of streaming and reviews and reactions. I've got, I've got videos coming out on that. And... Um, yeah, guys, once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys uh, on the next video.